people are on prescription anxiety medication and they never, ever, ever get to the root cause. It's so sad to think about someone that's been on like a lorazepam or another benzo for 20 years and they've never once been asked about the gut. The question came in, how does dysbiosis cause anxiety? What are the mechanisms? Well, I think one right out of the gate is gut inflammation. Number two would be nutrient malabsorption because as you mentioned, a lot of these B vitamins are necessary for many processes in the body, including energy production. So sometimes you have anxiety and chronic fatigue and that sucks too, because now you're too tired, but you're anxious. So that's not a fun recipe either. What what else would you say about the the gut anxiety connection? Well, so anytime you have um, chronic gut inflammation, whether it's from food, whether it's antibiotics, antibiotics creating rebound yeast or bacterial overgrowth, we could put H. pylori in that category, other infections as well. That's an, one you already mentioned, create malabsorption just from indigestion, right? Not enough enzymes, not enough acids, not absorbing things well. Two, you're going to have exogenous production of lipopolysaccharides, which in and of itself are a toxin, right? They're produced, they're part of the gram-negative bacteria in the gut, and they're stressful on the on the liver. And they're also can go to the blood-brain barrier. And when they're in the brain, they can create mood and anxiety issues as well. So you have lipopolysaccharides, um, you could have acid aldehyde and mycotoxins from fungus. You could have um, issues with the parasites producing their own type of uh, internal toxins, for sure. Of course, your body also produces through healthy gut bacteria, a fermentation process to make its own B vitamins, vitamin K, those kind of things. So if we have dysbiosis, we typically are going to have low levels of beneficial bacteria. So we don't have that good endogenous production of nutrients behind it. And then, of course, that's going to overactivate our immune system. So now we have all these toxins kind of slipping through our bloodstream. We have undigested food particles getting through our bloodstream. Now our immune system starts becoming hyperactive, and that can suck up energy. That can suck up resources. So there's studies on, for instance, H. pylori creating mental health issues, mental emotional issues, depression and anxiety, partly because of the lipopolysaccharides and endotoxins are the same thing, by the way, LPS or endotoxins, and obviously the nutrient absorption problems too. Man, when I had H. pylori, I was super anxious. I don't know if I was depressed as much, but I was definitely anxious. And you remember how skinny I got. I mean, I lost so much weight too. So a lot of people, you know, they look at anxiety on the surface, right? And everyone thinks anxiety is just like this mental thing. And you just need to watch some hoorah motivational video and just get over your fears and da-da-da. It's like, no, anxiety goes way deeper than that. You just eloquently illustrated this. The aldehydes from the yeast and the fungus toxins and the bacterial toxins and the parasitic toxins and the mycotoxins. You guys, this anxiety is not in your freaking head. It's not. It may manifest in your head, but the root cause is not in your head unless you're describing like this toxin getting across the blood brain barrier. But beyond that, the gut, I would say is the biggest driver of anxiety. I'd say if I had to pick one place to look, it would be the gut. 